They are installing a secondary battery, um, battery charger for the um, engine battery. And I can, you know, see everything and manage everything. When I need to take a break, I simply walk down the dock. And it's just fine. Siccome mi servono i coccioli per la pesca, vedi? Ma alle quattro l'ho messo. A month and a half telling them that that's the boat, that's the most beautiful boat in the world. I used to live in that boat. I know everything about that boat. If you need help, I will come help you with that boat. Good morning, all 6,491, I think it is of you. Um, today's day three, I think of the second refitting uh, electronics and, and solar panels. So today uh, we have the, guy, the guys from 2M, uh, the company that is doing the, the, the electricity electrical work this time uh, because it's lithium and I don't trust myself to put my hands on lithium. So um, we final, well, they finalize the entire new panel, which looks freaking amazing we have everything exactly as it should be we have our uh, four uh, fuse there then we have the DC to DC DC to DC switch uh, Citrix uh, Cherubo GX and the battery protector my battery protector that I installed uh, less than six months ago stopped working so it was giving it was taking in 13.4 uh, volts and it was giving out less than 11 so the guys from 2M fixed that and now they are installing a secondary battery um, battery charger for the um, engine battery so I kept I have four lithium batteries for the services and I kept one AGM battery for the engine that I hope still works because it went down to nine volts or something like that but the guys from 2M told me that it will probably you know being AGM and dip cycle it shouldn't have any problem with that so with this being done we have only to wait for the rigger uh, blue rigging uh, for them to come and install the second uh, stay sail and the bow spread and at that point again we will be ready to go one thing that people keep, ask, keep asking us is how do we support ourselves ourselves during this trip so we keep working um, some of you probably remember that I retired myself last year but then a huge opportunity came by so I decided to go back to work and it has been great amazing company um, amazing team so I'm really happy to it but now it became again a full-time job starting 7 a.m. and then sometime between 11 and midnight every day what I did is that I converted my navigation table into a work table so I can have everything that I need here let me show you so I have my computer I have, uh, I can, I still keep all the navigational part. This is the Raspberry Pi system, and I have all of the navigations and everything that I need is here. This is touch screen, so I can, you know, jump from one dashboard to the other, and I can, you know, see everything and manage everything. Right now it's turned off, but if I turn on the the, the chart plotter and I click here, this monitor will change to the chart plotter and I can control the chart plotters from here meaning that I have access to my um, remote control uh, sorry my autopilot and all of that and of course I have everything here so I have the the IES the SSB Victron Electronics the Radium Go the radio everything is here so even right now we are in, at the marina uh, doing the works that we need you know the refitting but when we navigate and if I have to work, this is how I work. So I can stay down here. I can see everything around me, the radar. I can see the IES. I can see everything, even the, the meteo, because, you know, the radar, the Furuno radar has also the rain and everything else. So I can, by data, <laughs> sail the boat, essentially. And that's a good thing about this setup.
the, the blonde works on the table or she works outside because of course she works too. So normally what she does is that because she only needs one computer, um, she just be on, on the galley or on the outside just doing her job. Also the reason why we only had one 220 volts attached to the inverter, to the Victron Multiplus, but now we have all of the 220 volts plugs inside the boat are now attached to also to the to the inverter. So we can she can connect the computer to any of, of the plugs. I need um, Starlink to keep running through the night because I need to receive emails, I need to send emails, I need to do calls and everything. Right now we are in the same uh, time, uh, what's the name? Time table? Time place? We have the same time of Italy because we are in Italy, right? So we are going to keep the same. We are going to have one hour difference when we go down to Copa Verde, for example. But then when we are, when the time comes and we are going to be in the Caribbean or in, even in, in the Southern Pacific, my calls and my work will be at night. <laughs> so my calls will start like at 1 a.m. and they will take all night. So I need lithium battery because I need Iridium Go to work. And, uh, Iridium Go, sorry. Uh, starting to work and I need to, to not lose connection at any time. Also, from uh, a feedback from Andre and Camila, uh, they told us that in the middle of the ocean, it will take as long as an hour for Starlink, the base, you know, mobile priority um, account, to connect. But as soon as it's connected, it will work perfectly. So, my idea is to have a Starling never disconnect. Guys, let's make a break. Uh, some days we stay uh, on the inside of the boat to work all day, so sometimes we forget that we are on the boat and there is seas outside. And I need to take a break. I simply walk down the dock and it's just fine it's beautiful it's very very calm i like to watch the other boats and of course meeting the people in it we met a lot of people in the last in the last month uh, from everywhere from turkish from america oh there's a nice bird It is 6 p.m. and we are finally done for now until probably someone's gonna call me on the phone. Parlando con le stesse persone, no? E quindi queste persone alla fine dicono, ah, okay, ma abbiamo due deals. But this is you know a normal day, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., 6 p.m. today. Today is an early day um, of calls and emails and everything else. And now I will finally go out and have a little walk around the around the piers. My working space is really comfortable. I have everything I need. But the space below is essentially I have my legs always crunch and I can't feel my ligaments at the moment. So I feel the need to go outside and have a little walk and it looks like someone catch something. This is our neighbor who has a beautiful family in a beautiful ML. <laughs> and the blonde seeing the catch of the day. Salami fish. Salami fish. <laughs> Questo mi mancava. Che dovevo buttare, ho detto, beh, siccome mi servono i coccioli per la pesca, vedi? Ma alle 4 l'ho messo. Eh? Questo, questo mi mancava. Eh. Non mi riprendere perché... No, 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 Le cassettine quelle in plastica, sai quelle basse? Sì. Ne legano una dietro l'altra a una distanza di un 3 metri, 4 metri 
e dentro alla cassetta ci legano delle ossa ok della carne ossa in generale ossa in generale e poi li buttano in acqua sul fondo ok e ne fanno a chi ma e con loro poi con loro cosa, cosa peschi no quelli le mangi no ah, con queste le pesco le, le orate pensa all'orata riesce a spaccarli riesce a spaccarlo e cavolo It's, it's funny, I think I, I already said this, but the American guy has a Amel um, Meltem from the 75, which is three years older than the one my grandfather used to have. And this beautiful piece of boat right here, man, this is the best boat that have ever been built. I love it. We did, me and my, my, my brother and my sisters, we did all of our infancy in this boat. And it is a freaking art piece, if you ask me. And it's amazing. We did a we did a breakfast with them. Lovely family, amazingly lovely family. And inside is exactly how I remember it. Even being you know three years uh, older than than the Zena, but it's exactly as I remember it. And the last time I was in that boat was 30 something years ago. And I was like, man, it feels like home. It's like going back to your grandparents' home. So <laughs> they have to invite you. <laughs> yeah, they, they had to invite they me. Make... I essentially spent like something like a month and a half telling them that like, that's the boat, that's the most beautiful boat in the world. I used to live in that boat. I know everything about that boat. If you need help, I will come help you with that boat. So at the end, after a month, you know, hinting them. They, they don't have a lot of choice. They don't have a they don't have a, they didn't have a choice. They had to invite <laughs> me over and I was like I don't want to go out. So we went for for breakfast and we left like three three hours later. Some of you might recognize it, but this is the Atticus 2 uh, from Atticus Project. The two guys who were they were, you know, sailing around the world but actually they came from the United States to um, the Mediterranean and now they are having a second baby so they decided to you know quit the sailing uh, life and everything else to go back home and you know create a family at, uh, on earth which is okay but the thing is we have been seeing this boat for a um, couple of months now it's parked just across our ones and it's slowly but surely leaning left if you see I don't know if you can see it from the video but the first time I saw it, it was perfectly aligned, really nice boat. But now it's leaning left and it's leaning every time a little bit more. So I don't know if someone knows the guys from from at Project Atticus, ask them to have a call to the Marina in Brindisi and see what's what, because I think it's leaning left, that's all I can say.